Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is a YouTube channel specialized in the GED math test. So as you know, your GED test will have five different types of questions, uh, which we'll be covering in today's video. Um, I had a request from at Antonia B and at Ignacio Garcia to cover um, slope questions and also mixed numbers. So I'm going to throw a few of those in today. Question one, a line passes through points at coordinates one, uh, three and minus six, two. What is the slope of the line? Okay, so this is a, um, a kind of level one slope problem. And what you have to remember is, first of all, what is the slope? So the slope is going to tell you how steep um, a line is, or a hill, for example. Um, and what it's looking at is sometimes known as the rise over the run, okay? So how, um, how far it goes up versus how far it goes uh, horizontally. And mathematically, this is expressed as that at y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus y1. So if we go back to the question, uh, you can see that they give us these coordinates. And just a quick reminder, uh, these are ordered pairs. So remember that the first value is always your x coordinate and your second value is your y. So this is the information that we have from the question. Okay, and now what you have to do to figure out the slope of the line is plug those numbers that they give you in the question into that equation. And it would look something like this. Okay, so your answer would be um, 1 7th. So option C. The next question is a fill in the blank sort of question. Um, and it says change the mixed number to an improper fraction. Write your answer in the box below. Okay, so first of all, let's remind ourselves a little bit about fractions and mixed numbers. So when you have a mixed number like this one, remember it contains two elements. One is a whole number and the other part is a fraction. And remember that fractions have two numbers. So they have a number on the top, which is known as the numerator, and the number at the bottom known as the denominator. So how do you change this number into an improper fraction? Okay, so for the numerator, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the whole number, which is three, and multiply it by the denominator, which is five, and then add the numerator, which is two. Okay, so it would be three times five, 15 plus two, 17. Okay, so that's gonna be your new numerator. And then the denominator for your new fraction is gonna be very easy because it stays the same. Okay, so it's gonna be five. All right, so ultimately you end up with 17 over five. At a restaurant, Joe's bill is $52. If he wants to leave a 15% tip, how much tip does he leave? All right, so here it's very useful to remind ourselves of the percentage rule. Okay, so this is a really useful formula for you to remember. The base total times the rate or the percentage gives you the part. Okay, so if we look back at the question, we know that um, the total was $52 and the percentage uh, or the rate was 15% uh, or 0 0.15. So if we multiply those numbers um, across, it gives us $7.80, uh, which he would leave as tip. So option B. All right, so this next type of question is uh, what they call a drag and drop question. And, um, you have to kind of become familiar with it. Uh, so they will give you a um, all the answer options at the bottom. Okay, so you can see all those squares at the bottom are the answer options. And you basically have to drag those little squares into those blank squares. Okay, so I'll just show you a quick demo. So you would click on it with your mouse and then drag it um, and deposit it wherever you have to. Usually it changes color to a blue. Um, and then just, you know, arrange your equation as you would like. And if you make a mistake, not a problem. All you have to do is just uh, click on that uh, square and then put it back um, to, in its place. Okay, so that's the whole idea. Okay, so it asks us um, in the question, the table represents hours worked by Rick and Jane. Which equation could be used to solve for Jane, Jane's hours during week one? 
Okay, so basically what they're telling us is uh, that Jane and Rick uh, together worked uh, 77 hours. Um, and we know from the table that Rick worked 31 hours, but we don't know how many hours uh, Jane worked. So she would be X. Okay, so that would be your equation. And then you would basically drag those elements from the answer option down below to form your equation like that. Okay, question five is a probability and statistics question, and it asks you a, it tells you a deck of cards has 52 cards with 13 cards each of hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds. If a card is drawn at random from the deck, what is the probability that it is diamonds? Okay, so here you have to remember this uh, formula for probability ratios, which tells you that um, for any kind of random event like this, you have to divide the outcome that you want, the favorable outcome, by the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, so if we go back to the question, the possible number of outcomes is 52, okay, because there's a total of 52 cards. So you can draw any of those 52 cards. That would be all the possible outcomes. But specifically, they're telling us that they want uh, to make sure that it's diamonds. And from the question, it tells us that there's 13 cards that are diamonds. So you would uh, set up your equation like that, 13 over 52. So if you reduce this fraction uh, further, uh, 13 divided by 13 is 1, and 52 divided by 13 is 4. Okay, so we would be 1 fourth or 1 in 4. The next question is um, one of these uh, geometry questions where they ask you to find the area of the shaded um, portion of a rectangle. And, and what this is, so the part that is in gray is actually a trapezoid or trapezoid, however you pronounce it. Okay, so um, in this case, what you have to do is find that formula in your formula sheet, which is this. So the area is gonna be half of the height multiplied by base one plus base two. So all you have to do is plug those numbers in, right? So the height was six. And then the base, uh, the top base is eight and the bottom base is 10, okay? It's not 12 because that two there on the left, you can see it's in the non-shaded region. So you would multiply that across and it gives you that the area is 54, answer C. To make the top of a table, uh, Mike glues a piece of oak that is uh, five, uh, five uh, sixth of an inch uh, to a piece of pine that is a f uh, one fourth uh, thick. What is the total thickness in inches of the table? Okay, and you can see that as the answer options, they give you a, a ton of uh, fractions and mixed numbers. So again, remember that fractions, top numbers, numerator, bottom numbers, denominator. And when you add or subtract a fraction, remember that the rule is that the bottom number, the denominator, always has to be the same. Okay, so you have to find what is known as a common denominator. So in this case, what is the common denominator of 6 and, twelve, and two, uh, 4? <laughs> God. It's 12, right? So you would multiply the fraction on the left by 2, and then you would multiply the fraction on the right by 3. Okay, so that you both have... Uh, the same denominator or bottom number, which is 12. So when you do that, you end up with 10 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, and that's going to equal to 13 twelfths. Now, you can reduce this fraction uh, even further, right, because 13 twelfths is also equal to 12 over 12 plus 1 over 12. And 12 over 12 is 1. Okay, so you would uh, write your uh, answer like this. So 1 and 1 twelfth, which is uh, answer A. All right, so this next question is um, one of these drop down menu questions. And usually they'll give you like a graph that you have to study to answer the question. So I always like to look at the answers anyway before I start, just to give me a kind of like a ballpark um, image of what I'm looking for. 
And let's quickly remind ourselves how to read one of these graphs. So very important, first things first, is that you want to read the title because this is telling you what it is that you're looking at. So here we're looking at the time spent by a record clerk per week. Then you want to look at the legend. The legend is telling you uh, what these colors in the pie graph represent. So if we look at um, the red dot, it says uh, that the red slice means preparing documents. So record clerks spend 20% of their time per week uh, preparing documents. And then the next thing that you want to remember is the percentage rule, right? So this rule that we've already spoken about today. So you would multiply the total times the rate and that would give you the part. Okay, so in this question, they're asking you, uh, they're telling you in the title that uh, there is a $2,000 investment. Okay, so that would be your base or your total. And then when you look at the percentage, they're asking you to look um, the amount invested in real estate. So if you look at the legend and you look at the green dot, that's for real estate. So real estate is 31% or 0 0.31. So you would multiply that by uh, the amount invested, as we said, $2,000. That gives you $620 invested in real estate. Okay, so just drop your menu and then click on the correct answer. Okay, so we have another uh, slope question here, and this question uses what is known as the slope, uh, excuse me, the point slope form. And it asks you to use uh, this, this equation to find the, uh, the equation of the line that passes through a specific point, and they're also going to give you the slope uh, of that line. All right, so if you remember, um, and I don't know if this I don't know if this is provided for you in the formula sheet, um, but this is the slope form, point slope form. Okay, so it's y minus y1 is equal to m, where m is the slope, multiplied by x minus, minus x1. And notice that in the question, they give you these two coordinates. Remember that these are ordered pairs. We already spoke about this. The first one is going to be x. The second is going to be y. Okay, so here in the rectangle on the right, uh, this is the information that they have provided for you in the question. So all you have to do is plug those numbers in, okay, which uh, gives you uh, that. And then the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to multiply out the right side of the equation. Okay, so we're going to multiply that 4 by x minus 6, like that. And then we want to isolate the y on the left by adding 2 on both sides. Okay, so 2 on the left, 2 on the right. That leaves us with y is equal to 4x minus 22. Answer B. All right, so here uh, it says Sam is paid $350 per month plus a 10% commission on his total sales for the month. If he made $1,475 in sales this month, what was his take-home pay? All right, so uh, we have to kind of think about what his take-home pay is made up of, right? So on one side, he's getting a fixed pay, right, which is the $350. And added to that, he's going to get a commission of 10% on whatever thing, on whatever he sells for that month. So they're telling us in the question, that he sold uh, 1,475 this month. So you would plug in your numbers like that. That gives you that amount. And when you add that together, it's $497.5, uh, excuse me, 0. 50 cents. Okay. Um, so answer C, $497.50. Okay, folks, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found any benefit, uh, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends or colleagues who might find it useful. As always, thank you so much for your time and have a terrific rest of your day.